Okay, Chase, Matthew, hope you guys are doing well. Good morning, evening, or afternoon, whenever you're watching this. Um, this is the second part of the video series that we're doing from this past uh, Thursday's class. And I want to encourage you, this video that you're about ready to watch, uh, if you'll look at the, you know, at the screen there, you'll see it's a very short video. It is not long at all. Um, my voice was just starting to get a little tired from talking so much in the last video so this will be pretty pretty quick and let's jump right into it okay we're on page number two in the middle and it says on your handouts and it says writing quadratic equations in intercept form all right let me show you something here do you remember what we learned on the very first day of class when it when it comes to chapter five I taught you that an equation like this uh, would be standard form and I taught you that an equation like this would be um, vertex form and then I taught you an equation like this with two sets of parentheses would be intercept form okay hopefully you remember all that remember my theory on videos or my philosophy as I go really fast you can always back it up and watch it again so I went over all of that well this last part of your lesson is amazingly ridiculously easy and here it is I mean think about it guys if I gave you an equation like this and I asked you to write it now right now it's in standard form if I asked you to take this same equation and write it in intercept form well you know exactly what to do you would have to factor this I mean because if you factor this would you not have two sets of parentheses the answer is sure so let's very quickly factor this notice it's a trinomial with a lead coefficient of one that's the easy kind so I'm gonna list out the factors of two and to save time I'm just gonna go ahead and put these two numbers if you multiply those two numbers you'll get a positive two if you combine them you'll get a negative three so I can factor the right side and it looks like this look at that <laughs> you're done you just learned how to take this equation written in standard form and now you've written it in intercept form isn't that cool and we're going to learn later by the way contain your excitement how to take this equation here and write it in vertex form all right well that was pretty simple let's go on to the other example in your notes uh, let's see let's open another page and here we go so we're on problem number two in your notes please take some really good notes on this do you see how math just all ties together and that's why it's so important you don't get behind very important you don't get behind okay well if I ask you right now it's in standard form standard form and so if I ask you to write this in intercept form um, you would want to factor this now unfortunately we do not have a lead coefficient of one but hold it look always pull out what's common do all of these terms have an X no there's no X over here so I can't pull an X out however I've got a 3 a 12 and a 15 I can pull a 3 out and when I do it becomes really easy then so factor out a 3 3 divided by 3 is 1 X squared negative 12 divided by 3 is negative 4 X and negative 15 divided by 3 is negative 5 look at that now you're left over with a trinomial that has a lead coefficient of 1 that's the easy kind so if I listed out all the factors of negative 5 the one that I the ones that I would end up needing would be these two numbers right here if you multiply those two numbers do you not get a negative 5 sure you do and if you combine those two numbers do you not get a negative 4 well sure you do so don't forget to bring your 3 down you gotta bring that 3 down and then put your parentheses x negative 5 x positive 1 woohoo there you go you did it alright so we're ready to jump into our homework so if you'll look at your sheet there I've only given you five of these man talk about a a kind loving teacher 
just kidding so let's go ahead and let's do these uh, five problems I'm trying to find them here okay number 81 is first now if you feel like you've grasped this and you're good with it that's fine but I want to really warn you if you were here at my house I could tell you which ones to jump down to and really make sure you practice and I guess I can do the same thing here in the video I'm gonna work all of these out so you can fast forward this and just watch or whatever but um, number 80 I mean like 87 starts off with a negative sign um, number 85 is interesting it only has two terms so I would I would at least watch I would work all these if I were you okay let's write this in intercept form I have a lead coefficient of 1 so it's the easy kind I'm thinking that if I have a positive 4 and a positive 3 those two numbers multiply up to 12 and they combine to give me a positive 7 so that was pretty fast moving on to the next problem you just wrote this quadratic in intercept form and by the way once you write it in intercept form don't you know what the intercepts are what would the x-intercepts be for this problem do you remember the x-intercepts would be negative 4 negative 3 alright alright let's try another one here Right, let's take a look at number 82. 82. All right. This was really just repetitive and redundant. So we're doing a lot of factoring today. So if you're getting this, that's good. You might not need to practice all of these. But okay, let's write this in intercept form. Notice we do have a lead coefficient of 1. So we're very happy with that. I think the numbers I would need would be positive 7, negative 5. If you multiply those two numbers, you get a negative 35. If you add those two numbers, you get a positive 2. So let's go ahead and write this in intercept form. Moving on to number 84. 84. Alright, number 84. Um, again, pretty cut and dry. Um, I did not realize when I made this assignment how these really are just pretty much the same. So um, do what you need to do to make sure you understand the math. Okay, write this in intercept form. Notice we do have a lead coefficient of 1, so it's the easy kind. Um, I think we'd have positive 10 and positive 10, would we not? Because 10 times 10 is 100, and 10 plus 10 is 20. So the factorization would look like this. Now, that's perfect. I love that. Nothing wrong with that. Some textbooks would want you to write your answer like this. I just want you to see this. Because you have x plus 10, x plus 10, they would say write it like that. I don't care. It doesn't matter to me. Just become familiar with both of these. Either one of these two answers are acceptable. It does not matter. Okay, next on your handout, it says to do 85. So here's number 85. Okay, this will be interesting. Let's pay attention here and watch this. Alright, um, first of all, I have taught you whenever you factor, you pull out what's common. Now, I do apologize for not reminding you of that through every single one of these problems, but we could not pull anything common out here in 81. Sorry about that. Let's try that again. We could not pull anything common out here on this one. We could not pull anything common out on this one. But on this one we can. So always do check, okay? Um, I cannot pull a, a whole number out because there's a 1 here. And the only thing that goes into 1 and 3 is 1. Now if you want to put a 1, you can. But I'm looking at the, I'm looking at the x's. Okay, hold on one second here. I'm looking at the x's and I can pull an x out. So pull an x out like this and you're left with, well, 2x's minus 1x's an x. Then you've got your negative 3 and x minus an x leaves you with none. You say, well, Mr. Earhart, that's not in intercept form. Well, it really is. Watch this. Could I not just simply say x plus 0 x minus 3? Yes, I could. Or you could say x minus 0. It really doesn't matter. I don't care. But, and you could leave it like this. I don't care. It doesn't matter to me. 
But yeah, you've written it in intercept form. That's totally fine. I mean, x plus 0 is x, or x minus 0 is x. Same thing. I really don't care. But yes, you did write it in intercept form. Okay, now we're going to move on to number 80, whatever's next, 87, and we're going to be finished. So that was pretty fast. I told you I would go as quickly as possible. And I'm sure that you're broken hearted now that the video is over. Y equals negative X squared plus 16X minus 64. Now, there's nothing common you can pull out. There's not an X in every term. The 64 does not have an X over here. So we can't pull anything out. But remember what I've taught you. You never want the first term to be negative. Never, never when you're factoring. So let's pull a negative sign out. And then we'll go through and change all of the signs. So your negative X squared became positive. Your positive 16 became negative and your negative 64 became positive. Okay? Alright. Now, look what's left over. We have a trinomial with a lead coefficient of 1. That's the easy kind. So, let's go ahead and put our numbers... Let's go ahead and figure out what numbers we would use. 8 and 8. Oh, that's wrong. Ha! That is incorrect. How about this? Alright, negative 8 times negative 8 is a positive 64. And when you combine negative 8, you get negative 16. Don't forget to bring down your negative sign. It has to be there. And then we have x minus 8, x minus 8. You just took a video that was written in what form? Standard form. And you wrote it in what form? Intercept form. All right, told you it'd be short. I'm glad to make it easy for you. Um, if you'll look at the bottom of your handout, you will see a four problem quiz. Do you see it? Look at the bottom of your handout, page two. It says page 317, do numbers five, six, and nine. And then I've thrown this problem at you, square root of two times four square root of 18. There's your quiz. This is due on Monday when you come to class, okay? Hope you have a great weekend. And, and uh, Matthew, your mom said you were kind of buried with some stuff, so I hope you've gotten all caught up with your other classes and chase you too. And we'll see you guys on Monday.